Hello, Assalamualaikum and good evening, good afternoon or good even good morning at what time that you are watching this. Welcome towards HRM uh, ADM 551, Human Resource Management. I'm going to be your lecturer this semester, so I hope that you're going to enjoy this time around. So uh, I believe that most of you have experiences in terms of management or public administration or, or organizational behavior in last semester or in your previous semester, as well as industrial relations. Though all of those subjects that you guys have studied is also fundamentally connected with human resources management. In human resource management, we basically try to understand what makes uh, uh, sorry, it's not what makes, how can you manage the talent in an organization? How you can you develop them in order to achieve the organization's goal? But but I think I'm going to spoil everything if I'm just going to spoil it over here. So uh, let's go on towards the first slide today. Yeah, I hope you have the slide with you. Uh, okay, let's take a look at here. Chapter objective, I think you can read it on your own. I think it's pretty clear, right? Yeah. So why do we study HRM? This is also very clear. I mean, like, yeah, for some of you, you think uh, we need to study HRM because we need to have our bachelor's degree. Yes, that's really important too. But the, the, the knowledge that you gain when you graduate uh, through this code will allow you to understand the different perspective of how to manage an organization, especially their human resource. How do you manage people? Yeah, you are not managing robots. You are not managing uh, animals. You are managing yourself, you are managing your friends, you are managing those people with different backgrounds yeah, to achieve a common goal. If you want to uh, you wanna find an organization that would want to employ you uh, to be a good HR executive, then this, uh, this course is really important. Yeah, so I, I know like some, uh, there, there, there is this identity confusion within uh, bus students, especially uh, coming from DPA. We, uh, the, the name of Bachelor of Administrative, Administrative Science, the core is administration, which is management itself. How do you manage people? Sometimes students get mixed that um, we, we focus too much on politics. We focus too much on public policy, which is true. I have no qualms in that. But most of uh, most of students, when they think about administration, they think about politics. But administration is more than politics. Okay, it's more. It's about managing human beings. And uh, since your bachelor is uh, very versatile, because say you can either work with the public sector or the private sector. After this, you have the chance to use both sides of the knowledge to gain a chance to work with businesses. Yes, you cannot expect everyone going to work in the public sector, right? <laughs> that's a conundrum for in issue most of my friends when i when they graduated bachelor in administrative science they don't really work with the government they don't work with the public they work with private entities so this knowledge that you gain from management organizational behavior hrm is really important because it allows you to put your to put your legs into two different fields which is in the public sector as well as the private sector so it's really important yeah so why do you study hrm you tell me the slides here i think you can read it on your own on that part but it's really important yeah it's really important next one here uh human capital and hrm you can take a look at these slides uh, these are words to describe the important uh in how important people are to organizations so regardless of what organization they may be maybe in public sector or in the private sector but mostly on hrm we're going to take a look at how do we manage in private sector uh, in the public sector, it is, all, uh, it is almost very similar, but we need to have the knowledge in order to manage these kind of uh, resources that we have. So it is also called as human resources, human capital, intellectual assets, and talent management. Yeah. So you can take a look, human capital is defined as the knowledge, skills, and capabilities of individuals that have economic value to an organization. So it is basically the KSA, okay? Knowledge, skill, at sorry, not the attitude, but the capabilities of individuals in the organization that will profit the organization because they are very talented. They can do their job well. Yeah. So you can ex the extension of human capital here. You can take a look. Uh, intangible. You know what is intangible, right? You, you it cannot be touched. It cannot be. Uh, it cannot be forced to into a, some kind of form with your hands. It, it is only uh, from your mind they can you feel it and people can understand it yeah uh, 
you can take a look at that. valuable because capital is based on company specific skills yeah it's specific to what what organization you're working in maybe it's an it is it in marketing is it an accountancy you tell me in terms of what organization that you are working in yeah is gained through long-term experiences maybe say that this capital does not come uh in, in one day it doesn't come in one month or even in one year sometimes you need experience years of experiences to have that capital in the workers themselves so we as hr managers will try to develop the workers in our company in our organization to have this kind of talent yeah can be expanded through development so this development will also be uh will be connected with training. So how do we train them? How do we develop the workers to ensure that they are uh, continuous, uh, continuous gaining knowledge, continuous gaining skills and experiences that will help the organization at the same time themselves, yeah? So definition of HRM, I think I'm just gonna take one here. I mean, one, there's a, I think there's a few, two slides here. A definition of HRM, the process of managing human talents to achieve and organization's objective. So this is Mel and Bollinger, okay, 2007. So this is basically the managing of human talents, yeah, to achieve the organization objectives. Very similar to what I, I, I have said previously, yeah. So you can also take a look at other definitions here in the slide, and they would be also uh, forming a similar formula in terms of understanding what they are, yeah. Same one as this, you can take a look at this. If you have any confusion with any of this definition later on, we can discuss in our Zoom class, yeah. The importance of HRM, it needs to have value. I mean to say it increases when employees find ways to decrease costs, provide uniqueness of the product to the customer or with the combination of both. I mean to say you are trying to uh, to ensure that the product uh, is efficient or the pro uh, or the well, the services is efficient to you. It's efficient, I think you know the differences between efficiency and effectiveness, right? Effectiveness is achieving a particular goal. A particular goal. Efficiency is achieving the goal with the less time, with less time and less cost. So basically, uh, you are trying to make it much more efficient. Yeah. So through HRM, so the value of the things uh, you can achieve more by doing less. Yeah. Uh, the resources must be rare. I mean to say, the, the people there, it must be rare. You uh, it, to show that you have competition against other organization. So your workers must be. Uh, in better skills than other organizations. So they can do their work better than other workers in other companies. Resources must be difficult to imitate. I mean, say people cannot imitate your workers because they have the, uh, their own capital that you have grown in them for years. Yeah. Resources must be organized. So this is basically you need to organize these people so they can understand where do they work in, what kind of function do they, uh, uh, are they supposed to be uh, focused on. So all of these are part within the organization themselves. Yeah. So this is also the other part of HRM. I think uh, try to do this on your own. In case any of this point doesn't make sense, come back to me. Okay, you can ask in, the, in our class later. I think it's, it's quite easy. You guys are smart, right? Okay, this is our overview HRM. So uh, if you want to know what is HRM, this is a system. Okay, this is a Monday and No 2005. It is showing which part of HRM are, are being classified. All of these will be, uh, we will be learning throughout the semester. Yeah, we have staffing, we have HRD, human resource development, compensation and benefits, employment and labor relations, safety and health. So these are all part of HRM. I think you might, uh, you might already have uh, uh, experiences in labor relations, yeah? industrial relations. I think you've taken that course before, right? So I hope you still have some memory of uh, that particular code uh, because it is re really re relatable towards HRM, yeah? The functions of HRM. So these are the functions. I'm not gonna focus much more here because each of the point here is a chapter on its own. So I'm just gonna go through, yeah? I'm just gonna throw, go through a bit because each of the point here have their own chapter that we will discuss in the future, such as like every point here, yeah, that all the functions. So you can try to read it on your own first here, try to uh, understand it on your own. But in case you get confused, as always, you may ask me during our, during our Zoom class after this, yeah. So the functions of HRM is staffing, job analysis, HR planning, recruitment selection, HRD, training development, career planning, career development, organization development, and performance appraisal. 
uh, compensations and benefits, safety and health and employee and labor relations. So all of these are the functions of HRM and each of the points constitute as a chapter on their own later. So uh, you may say goodbye to them right now, but we will encounter them later on. So don't worry if, I, if I'm not explaining it to you right now, because we will be explaining it extensively in our future videos, yeah? But as always, if you have any questions on this particular slide that, that I'm skipping, you may ask in our Zoom class after this, yeah? So this is the overall framework for human resources management. In, uh, I hope you are reading the title, yeah? Provides figure, this figure 1.1 provides an overall framework of HR activities. From this figure, we can see that managers help, sorry, have to help blend many aspects of management. It is the basis of our discussion throughout this chapter. I mean to say that through on the right side, you guys will see employees concern. And you have on the left side is competitive challenges, changes in the market, economy, technology, and on the side, job security, healthcare, retirement issues. And all of this will eventually come into the middle of human resources where they have to manage this issues yeah how can they manage it how, in what way can they solve this kind of issue that are surrounding the external environment of the organization yeah so when we talk about human resources it's not simply just about training but it's about understanding your environment and your workers that are who are working with you okay so affecting factors to HRM, I think this is something really clear so it is there's two types of uh, factors that will affect to HRM Number one is external for, uh, factors, factors that affect a firm's HR from outside of the organization. I think that's clear, right? And internal is from the inside of the organization. So let's take a look at what they are, okay? So external forces, your labor force market, pool of individuals external to the firm from which the organization obtains it work, its workers, it always changing and inevitably, inevitably cause changes in work in the workforce of an organization. So when you come out, when you graduate, when you graduate your diploma, when you graduate SPM or your bachelor's degree, you will be part of the labor market. Unless you want to get married after this, then you're not part of the labor market. But I believe at least 90% of you here are interested to find a job. So when you finish uh, studying, uh, then you are part of the labor force, uh, lab, 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 labor force itself, okay? Because the the people this labor force will always change in what way you might say because um, the 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 labor force is much more educated yeah because most of you have bachelor's degree 30 years ago bachelor's degree uh, uh, labor market is really hard to find but nowadays you can just throw a stone and a stone is going to hit a person with at least a bachelor's degree so the 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 force uh, the the labor market is changing yeah the people who are working uh, uh, the people who are trying to find for work is changing. Uh, in times of COVID-19, I think it's going to be much more very challenging. So you're going to you're going to be facing a, a, a future that is very much more challenging than mine. When I graduated, I thought my time was hard, but God bless your future, kids. Okay, I'm not trying to be negative, but you need to be uh, you need to be ready for the future. Yeah. So where how are you supposed to be ready to studying properly experience properly in the university engage more i don't want you guys coming out out of the university being blank yeah you need to have your own capital capital is not only achieved when you're working with an organization with a, with a company but you can gain the capital through organization uh, through your study days involved in uh, involved in sorry what you call associations in university involved in volunteering Okay, those are things will help you to develop to be able to speak with public with the public. You can, it will help you to develop how communication skills, your soft skills. Those are really important. Yeah, for some of you, I I think you know who you are. I'm not going to point to towards anyone. When you guys present in front, you you don't you lack confidence. You know you you know what I mean. You 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 read it from a paper. You you don't really understand what you are talking about. You just read from the slides. So that is not what employees are looking for. So right now, you guys are semester four, right? You still have one more year plus, one and a half year plus to improve your own capital. If you do not know how to speak publicly, if you do not know how to engage with people, if you do not know how to use computers, yeah, you need to do it now, one and a half year. This is the place where you gain your capital. Some of you, I believe, uh, are really impressive. 
Yeah, I really, really impressed. I really like that. Please continue on developing better skills so you can work better in better organizations in the future. The future is yours, guys. So what you do today in your university days matters. So please get involved with any association. Mungkin kamu cakap, uh, sir, right now is COVID-19, so we don't have any associations. Find volunteer, volunteering programs, yeah? Get involved. If you do not get involved right now, you won't be able to develop yourself as a person that is going to find a work. Unless you're really beautiful or you're really handsome, you can just find some beautiful man or beautiful, beautiful man, what is beautiful man? A very gorgeous woman or a very rich man to be part of your life. So that would be easy. But for the rest of us, we have to work hard. Okay, we have to develop our own skills. We have to develop on our own capacity to understand the world and work in the company that you love, that you like, okay? Because life is not all about working in any organization. It needs to have value to you. You must like that job, yeah? So I hope you, I hope that watching this, you have some sense of realization that you're not going to be students forever. You're not going to be students for the rest of your life. Yeah, sure, maybe you will say philosophically, sir, we will always be students for the rest of our life. We are students of uh, life, true. True, but right now, the, uh, you are you guys are in a bubble, and that bubble will burst when you stop studying. Okay, when you finish graduating, I mean, yeah. So you need to improve your skills. Kalau tidak pandai bercakap, belajar bercakap. Yeah. If right now you are in your house, try to speak in front of mirror. Lancarkan uh, how you speak to people, because who would want to appoint or who want to who want to select an employee if they couldn't even speak. Yeah, you need to know how to mimic your face. Yeah, how you need to how to smile. Some people murung saja presentation. Yeah, so that's a problem because you need to know how to make human skills. Because nowadays, everyone can graduate with 3.5. But whether your human skill, your soft skills is there, is really, really important. So please improve. Yeah, this uh, is coming uh, from an advice of your senior. I'm your senior, yeah, as well as your lecturer. But I hope you take heed on this. Yeah. But going back to this, what we're studying, yeah, what we're studying, we're talking about uh, the labor force, yeah, be competitive, competitive towards your other friends, yeah. Next one is legal consideration and requirements relates to federal, state, or local rules and regulations that affect the HR policies, various issues on laws, policies, rules, and regulations imposed by the government. So, uh, example like this is in terms of our minimum wage. Do you know what is our minimum wage? If you know what is our minimum wage, kindly con. Uh, put the number down there and you see how many people have the same answer. Probably they're just copying paste, but uh, if you have time, please call, uh, please tell me what is the minimum wage of uh, Malaysia for the year 2020 month of September. Okay, you, you can put the information down in the comment section so people in the future can read it. Oh, it's uh, it's Mr. It's whoever is posting there. Lah. So I'm hoping that someone or even there's a lot of people posting there, no problem. Okay, it's information sharing. You can just Google and post the answer there. Yeah, if you don't want to, okay, da paksa, da paksa. Okay, so this kind of legal consideration is really important. So if you cannot afford to, uh, if you cannot afford to get workers because you are unable to pay them, then that would be a problem. Those are what we say as external factors. Yeah, so in the future as well, if the government says that, okay, we're gonna increase your minimum wage of workers. To, for the entire country up to 3,000. Yes, for us, we're happy. But whether the organization can afford to, to pay you 3,000 ringgit is a matter of a, a different issue. So you need to understand what on what grounds does the organization stand. Yeah, okay. So in terms of legal consideration, if a new law was created or if a new requirement is created, then your organization have to follow through, especially in terms of HR. For instance, uh, the government suddenly says that, okay, retirement age for all everyone in Malaysia is uh, is being pushed to 70 years old. Okay, so you can have workers that are in 70 years old working in your organization. So in the public service right now, the maximum you can go is what age? 60. Okay, 60. So imagine if there's new rules pushing you, uh, pushing you to have more than 70 70 years old, those are the things that are part of legal considerations, yeah. External factors, economic conditions, yeah, recession, it, it will affect, it, you can take a look at mass right now, MH, yeah, they are suffering so bad right now, we get, I hope, I hope they can sustain, yeah. So uh, when economic, uh, economic concerns that are caused by COVID-19, 
it's been uh, it's being affected it's affecting everyone and every every country in the world so you know there's a there will affect your hr as well i mean say you could only uh, afford to hire a few few people you can only you have to reduce your workers you can only uh, hire specific amounts of wages for your employees so those external factors affecting hr as well technological changes yes i mean to say that uh, technology sometimes replaces human being so you don't have to hire forced labor it's not forced labor i mean the manual labor anymore you can have robots doing that so it would be much more efficient so it's good for company but not good for people yeah not good for company but not good for people this, this is what we call it, external factors yeah customers who your customers are sometimes customers can be changing because like you know and uh, customers nowadays they are much more uh, savvy in terms of uh, the environment so they are they focus more in organization that protects the environment i mean i just go to with starbucks just plastic straw is not there anymore save the turtle yeah so all of these environmental factors is really important for customers nowadays so we don't know what kind of customers we will have in the future just like uh, in any organization different people in different country have their own understanding and culture so you have to adapt towards uh, the the culture that is suitable uh, sorry the customers that they are that, that that are going to your organization or your company for services or products competition yeah so i think this is really easy you compete with other people remember nokia where are they now remember kodak where are they now they are unable to compete with any other organization during that time and now they are being sold with uh, uh, to other corporations they are still in existence but it's not their former glory a glow of form yeah so it's really important for you uh, to understand your competition who you are and how you improve yeah external factors your shareholders what kind of shareholders yeah pemegang saham kamu what do they want you to do how much do they expect you to gain yeah people invest in your company and they expect you to do uh, things that will be profitable towards them so if you are hiring people that that are not uh, competent enough that will affect the performance then it will affect the hrm overall because they, you are not profit profiting your shareholders and your hrm is not in line towards what they are uh, what they are wanting for yeah unions are uh, this is a part of uh, industrial relations lah. okay so i think i'm i'm, I'm gonna skip on this in, but in case you have a questions on this question on this you can ask later yeah society I mean to say the uh, people around the world uh your your the society in a country mean to say well uh, uh, do you guys still remember what is the maternity maternity leave for a woman in malaysia at least two months right at least two months so what if uh society pressures that oh we want three months for everyone regardless of uh cooperation whether the public or private sector you want three months so the hrm factor will also be affected as well. So uh, giving people maternity leave is also part of HRM as well. Yeah, I hope you know because it's related with our industrial relations and it's uh, put under law. So society can push something. So uh, two years ago or, or around 2019, uh, the, the former government was trying to push into uh, uh, father, father leave. I mean to say that when father leave, patriarchal leave, okay? So make it, uh, you, you can correct me later but basically if if uh if, if you have a uh, if you have you if your wife give just given birth to a baby usually it's just the woman that has a leave okay but now they, they were trying to fight the father should have leaves as well okay uh i forgot what's the name uh kindly correct me contact me in case you remember what's the name patriarchal leave father leave <laughs> put that in the comment yeah uh, internal factors. So we were talking about external factors just now. So this is the internal factors. Marketing, how organization attract people to join the organization, uh, operation, finance, organization policy, organization performance, internal labor supply and demand. So all of these are internal factors that will affect an organization. So it, it needs to be uh, understood. It needs to be uh, clear. <coughs> not COVID, okay? Uh, it needs to be clear. It needs to be uh, well rehearsed by the organization so that they are prepared for any situations. So competitive challenges, uh, these are top, uh, top challenges for, uh, for HRM, yeah? Responding strategically. So always remember when you talk about strategically, what does it say? It talks about what? Long, 
term, very good long term. You say you are not looking only like one month or two months or few, uh, next year. You're looking, uh, you are looking forward towards a, a very long period of time, 10 or 20 years from now. So uh, because uh, these changes in marketplace, it will change. Yeah? Just like what the example I will give you, not all of our culture will stay forever. We, society will change, technology will change, our ideas will change, philosophy will change, ideology will change. Yeah, so organ an organization needs to fit through all of these changes to ensure they are successful. So challenge are competing and recruiting because you're recruiting globally now. You have, you, you're not only fighting for Malaysia, but you're fighting other workers from Indonesia, the Philippines, or uh, from other continents, yeah? setting and achieving corporate social responsibility csr so you can say you need to know what can you contribute towards the society advancing advancing hrm with technology so if you are lagging behind your technology is not advanced enough with other other organization we will let, you will be left behind just like what i give an example before this yeah could you give me another other examples of uh, how company that has gone obsolete because of their technology uh, or because of uh, they were lagging lagging behind of their competitors if you have any ideas, you may put down in our comment section. Yeah. Containing costs with retaining top management and maximizing productivity. So uh, you, you know when, when your talent is so good, when your workers, talent workers uh, in this context with HRM, they're technically same, uh, saying the same thing, but these are workers that has proper capital. Meaning to say they are, they are very valuable. They have been working with you for so many years and they are, they are very expert in terms of what they, whatever they're doing. So if you are trying to want to employ them more you have to pay them more because if they are the best then you have to pay them the best way yeah engineers are paid thousands of dollars a month yeah because of their skills if they are not satisfied they can just easily move to other organization or other organizations excuse me responding to demographic and diversity challenges to the workforce is basically about education gender yeah you can take a look at your class right now how many of you are male and how many of you are female majority are female yeah probably in this class i'm not i'm not so sure within this class there now but most of my students are female so most people who are graduating bachelor's degree are female so hrm needs to change in terms of understanding who they are targeting with yeah adapting to educational and cultural shifts affecting the workforce so this is almost very similar what kind of culture has changed what kind of educational issues have changed yeah so these are uh, the the strategy it needs to infer it needs to be uh, associated with this where they understand the TQM yeah the engineering downsizing outsourcing change management reactive change positive change and six sigma so uh, let's take a look at what is TQM I think you can read it here yeah set of principles and practices whose core ideas includes understanding customers needs doing things right first time and striving for continuous environment, sorry, improvement, that is TQM, you, you are taking care of the quality. Yeah, quality management, it, it talks about everything, the product, the people, the trainings, the organizations, all are to ensure that the quality, out, the, uh, quality, the output has good quality. Yeah, next one is six Sigma. Have you heard about Sigma? Or the word Sigma, I think you, you might have studied mathematics for statistics and you, knew, you know that, uh, that symbol like that, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just show you after this. Yeah, how it looks like. So it's not here. Okay, I have to paint it for you. So a sigma looks like this. Yeah, let's draw. Roughly la, roughly la. Okay, roughly. And there would be a six over here. Six Sigma. You can just Google it later. You will know how it looks or you'll be like, oh, you're familiar. Definitely you guys are familiar with it. Okay, Six Sigma. But you can just Google later. So Six Sigma is a process to translate customer needs into a set of optimal tasks that are performing concert with one another. So let's take a look at how is it being done. Here. You can take a look at this. It starts with define the problem, whatever it is. Uh, then you measure how you can measure certain things in the organization or, uh, or focus or function in the organization then you analyze then you improve it and then you control to ensure that there's no deviation from it so you can ensure that the process the system the the the, the rules regulation of the company the policy is properly uh, is properly at higher and people are following the the policy or sop yeah standard operating procedure 
So this is definition of six sigma. Sigma is the Greek letter representing the standard deviation of population of data. So you can Google it on your own. So let's take an uh, example of six sigma here. So on the left side here, you can take a look at uh, 3.8 sigma. Oh yeah, there, that's the symbol of sigma right there. Okay, so I'm a bad, I'm a bad drawer. So but you can see it, yeah. It's 3.8 sigma. So in 3.8 see. 3.8 sigma in an hour you will lose around 20,000 lost males okay but if you are at six sigma you will only lose seven males per hour major differences okay major differences that's why it's 3.6 sigma or six sigma the differences you can take a look at other examples here yeah i think the most uh, i think the most catchy is about the water here yeah in 3.8 sigma you are drinking 15 uh, 15 minutes of unsafe water each day but if you have six sigma you will be only drinking one minute of unsafe drinking water every seven months so that's the difference between three three point eight sigma or six sigma so this is basically saying that you need to achieve almost close to perfection not 100 percent, but 99.99 percent. so this is a part of quality control itself in an organization yeah Reengineering and HRM fundamental rethinking and radical uh, redesign of business processes to achieve dramatic improvement in cost, quality, service, and speed. So you just like how you engineer a car, or you engineer a machine. So you can also re-engineer the organization because uh, when you talk about reengineering, you talk about you you talk about gears, right? You there's uh, gears moving there and there and this a movement of gears will ensure the performance of the organization but when you re-engineer it you change the gears yeah you make it bigger or you make it smaller you put much more gears to ensure that the flow of the organization just like as, as a machine is smooth and fast for its current environment and its external environment and its internal environment so that's why you say you re-engineer okay towards its environment downsizing so this plan elimination of jobs so this is also a part of the you're laying people off you say goodbye towards them because probably the economy is not good yeah a lot of companies right now uh circa 2020 are, are are closing down and they have to downsize and they have to remove their employers from the organization so this is Responding strategically changes in the marketplace. If the marketplace isn't good, you have to downsize your organization. Outsourcing, okay. Contracting outside the organization to have work done that formerly was done by internal employees. So you have other people from other companies that are that are working for other companies. You pay them, but they are doing the work for you. For instance, before this, the the, the accountancy uh, department was doing the accounting for your firm, but since you downsize the organization. So you have to hire other uh, workers from other companies to do the accounting for you. Yeah, you understand? Just like we in in uh, in the public sector, okay, in public sector, uh, we used to have our own cleaners, but nowadays we have cleaners from other third-party organizations. So we are not using there's no public servant that is a cleaner anymore. But you, they you, they are in the past, but nowadays we take uh, private contractors to work with them. So we pay the private contractors and the private contractors will pay these cleaners. Yeah. So that is what we call as outsourcing. But outsourcing is also, uh, it, it, somehow it can be bad, it can be good. In what way? You tell me in our class later. Yeah. There's some uh, question for you to think about. Next is offshoring, global sourcing, the business practice of sending jobs to other countries. So if you're a company, you're sending your, uh, uh, your development of skills or development of sorry not development of skills development of the products or services from other countries so for instance if you're a uh, what do you call what kind of a company you are uh, a car company so the car production is being made in other countries where labor prices are cheap that's why there's a lot of western cars in asia right now because the labor is cheap because the we don't cost a lot as compared towards Western countries. You can take a look at this in Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam, where, country, uh, where companies in uh, Western countries, in order to save costs, they send their building, their factories. Also, it's very true in Japan. They send it over here in Southeast Asia because uh, the labor is the laborers are educated, but they are cheap to pay. Yeah. So this is what we call as offshoring. So you might want to offshore it to some other companies, eh, to some other countries that are easily uh, that are easily um, cost friendly to the organization 
why change effort fail I mean to say that uh, why you want to change your organization but it, it doesn't really work why uh, number one here not establishing a sense of urgency people don't really think it's uh, important yeah not creating a powerful coalition to guide the effort I mean to say the organization the management the people there top management they don't really think that it's important lacking leaders who have vision yeah they don't really take a look at the future what's happening after this so suddenly there's a new change that they don't they, they are unable to be ready yeah lacking leaders who communicate the vision so they have the vision but they don't really talk about it so people will forget not removing uh, obstacles to the vision so they don't really uh probably they just uh forget about the obstacles or they are unable to overcome the obstacles not systematically planning for and getting short-term wins. Need to say that short-term wins refers towards, uh, you know, strategically is refers towards a long term, but tactically, okay, tactically is short terms. You need to gain uh, advantage over an event uh, by stages, okay? By mean to say that step one, you need to achieve uh, 500,000 ringgit. So that is a win. Next month, you need to get 10,000 sales. So that is a second win. So these are what we call as short-term wins or improving sales, improving productivity for the organization so it needs to have uh, when you don't have this the motivation of the organization is affected the financial of the organization is affected so it affects so many things yeah declaring victory too soon maksudnya ini macam uh, sembang lah sudah menang sekali terus sudah ingat will be safe forever so it's not like that yeah you have to ensure that uh, you're gonna win forever just like like bola lah you think you're gonna win forever but no <laughs> sila masuk gua Okay, not anchoring changes in the corporate culture. I mean to say the corporate culture, people don't hire it. People will remember, people will try to follow for one month. The corporate is the management, the organization, the top leaders there. But after a while, people will still for, uh, start to forget about it. People don't care about it. So they're not anchoring it. They don't tidak sahu. Okay, they don't tidak ikat this kind of value or change in the corporate culture of the organization. Globalization, I think this is, uh, I think it's clear. I think you can go uh, read it on your own and tell me, but in case you think uh, it's really important for me to explain globalization, do let me know. But I think it's really clear. You are very familiar with globalization, yeah? CSR, the uh, responsibility of the firm to act in the best interest of the people, communities affected by activities, as well as sustainability, uh, refers to companies that need to produce a good or service without damaging the environment. So this is basically a challenge. How can they do something that is not de uh, destroying the environment? How can they develop uh, the community around them? Uh, you might think, uh, what's the importance? Uh, because uh, if you do not have, uh, this is really, really related with ethics. So you can ask, uh, if you are studying ethics this semester as well, so you can understand that an organization need to have their own ethics yeah because if they don't have this kind of ethics then we are creating a world that doesn't really care about each other so that's a big problem so csr will allow us uh, for organization to care about the people to care about the community to care about the environment yeah so sometimes when they don't care then there's a problem yeah Advancing a charm with technology, I think this is also uh, I think it's really easy. You, you don't want to get left behind with technology. People using 5G, you are still using G, okay, GPRS. So that is very lagging behind. People are using wireless, you are still using cable. Yeah, those are changes on technology, HRM. Yeah. Uh, this is part of uh, advancing with technology, which is which is HRIS, human resources information system computerized system that provides current and accurate data for purpose of control and decision making so nowadays if you are very advanced in your organization they have this hris they will allow you to manage leave they will allow you manage people you can tell who hasn't taken their training who needs training so all of this is under hrs yeah when people apply it apply to your organization if there's any vacancy you can easily look them up under hris so it becomes much more automated, yeah, automated. So these are benefits, automation of routine tasks, lower administrative costs, increased productivity and response times, yeah. I think it's really clear, yeah. Online recruiting, screening and testing of applicants. So it's really, it's really fast. You don't really have to make people to come to your organization all the time just to, uh, just to ask or to interview them, yeah. Advancing HM technology, yeah, you can take a look at this the sites containing costs while retaining top management so you can take a look at this how you can contain your cost because operating an organization is really costly it takes a lot of time it takes a lot of effort so how can you save um, your money your profit 
you take a look at this. Carefully managing employees' benefit means so what do they get? You don't want to give them uh, all, everything in the world, everything under the sky. I mean, to say that you give so much, but the performance aren't really that good. So it needs to have uh, take a look at how your benefit goes with their motivation of the employees at the same time, whether you can afford them, yeah, this benefit. Downsizing means you decrease your employees, probably through technology, so you can have robots doing it. Flooring, uh, flooring the employees, leave of absence means you give them a leave of absence so you don't have to pay them. Most companies are doing like this, yeah. They are still working with you, but you give them leave, especially like in COVID right now. Most companies are flooring their employees. They don't fire them, but they give them leave of absence. Yes, you, you understand, right? Good. Outsourcing, the one we discussed just now, offshoring, very similar in employee leasing. What is employee leasing? Oh, sorry, from your side. Okay, the employee leasing is the process of dismissing employees who are then hired by leasing company, which handles has all HR related and contracting with that company to lease back the employees. So this is kind of like cruel way. Yeah, you know, you, you fire your employee and then another company will uh, will hire them. Therefore, you will hire your and then those employees that you that are now working with other companies will go back to your company to work again. So you're not really paying them, other companies paying them. So this is kind of cruel, but I think it's a, a way to cost management. So sometimes I think it's really ironic that we're talking about human resource management trying to handle people, but they are trying. It's very much very capitalistic, but that is the real world, okay? Nothing nothing says that the world is heaven, yeah? But it's a problem. And I, for me, as a person, I don't really like this kind of idea because you're firing people because you want to have them uh, to be paid lower, so you don't have to pay much. You are contracting them from other companies. You don't. You you are say you. What you're basically saying is the other company is doing the dirty work for you. Yeah. Do you understand? If you don't understand, we can discuss further in Zoom later after this. Yeah. So this uh, responding demographic and deficit challenges. So this is uh, in the U.S. population. An increase. You can take like the white population there in 2010 is 64 percent, but in 2050 it will increase you will decrease to 46 percent yeah so changes of demography uh this is as well managing diversity being aware of characteristics ethnic and cultural aging workforce more educated so this is a i think we already covered this in ob yeah or organizational behavior for this but in case you're not really clear in any of this particular slide you may contact me so these are examples Education as well, yeah. So this, I think we already touched this a little bit just now, yeah. You can take a look at there. The higher your education, the higher your salary, okay. Not all the time, but most of the time. This is an example of US, yeah. Other factors, uh, cultural and societal change, yeah. Uh, we did talk about this just now. Employee rights, just now. I think uh, you have. I hope you are really aware with what's going on in Indonesia, where they're trying to. Uh, protect their employees right by doing protests yeah privacy concerns of the employees uh, mean to say something that is really related towards privacy I mean to say the pictures their identity their information that are not supposed to be shared that are considered to be private changing attitudes towards work I mean to say people are much uh, looking for flexible working they don't really like to work eight to five every day probably they want to work like from home Balancing work and family. So uh, they want to balance work and family. They want to have a chance to work with their family. They want to not work with their family. So they want to have a chance to be with their family. Yeah. And any work that is able that is able to provide this will attract employees to work with them. And in major organizations all around the world are doing this right now to attract top talents. I hope Malaysia is progressing to do that. But I don't think so much in KK. I think there's a, we have a big problem in terms of the mentality of the organization here. They only want money. They don't really care what's happening towards the people. That's a big problem. So you can read on your own here, adapting to educational. How do you manage it? You tell me if you, it's not clear. Yeah, but I think I, I'm confident that you guys can handle this one. Partnership of line managers and HR department. So you can take a look at here, the explanation saying, I think it's quite, quite clear. So just like managers, HR department have their own speci speciality. You can take a look at down there in the in the table. Training and development managers, benefit managers, human HR managers, 
compensation benefit and job analysis specialist. So all of these are really high paying uh, jobs. So if you're really interested in working under uh, HR, it is really stressful. I'm telling you, it is really stressful, but it pays a lot if you find the right organization because it's not easy to manage people. Yeah, you are going to be stressed out. But if you have the capability of doing so, then you will be uh, lending yourself in a gold mine. Okay, you'll be really rich, especially if you're intending of working overseas. So they will be uh, looking at your talents in managing people. So I wish you luck. Yeah, if you're interested in how to manage people. Responsibilities of HR manager, strategic advice, service, policy formulation, and employee advocacy. Competencies of HRM requires business mastery, HR mastery, and personal credibility. So I think it's really clear. Yeah. So this is how it goes, the pyramid. So you need to have personal credibility, your own as a person, that HR mastery and your business, understanding where is the organization going, what sort of problem do you need to avoid, and what kind of situation do you need to add higher to, okay? So these are the key terms. So I guess that we have end towards our uh, slides here. So uh, as always, thank you so much. I see you guys in our Zoom class. If you have a question, okay, if you have a question, do let me know. We're going to discuss further. If you have any ideas, any things that are in concern of human resources after this in Zoom class, do let me know. Okay. So I'm going to leave you guys with this. Look. Okay, there we be all. <laughs> I see you guys there. Goodbye. Yes.